If you're in a place where you're ready to say out with the old and in with the new, then today's video is just for, well, you. Hey everybody, I'm Kate Buck Jr. You're watching the Social Media Pro channel. Today's video is somewhat of a personal video for me, but as a matter of fact, it's come up three times this week on coaching sessions with my mentoring students. Are you in that place where you feel stuck and you're in a repeating cycle of getting the same types of clients, the same low rates, same overload of work, and you are finally at a place where you are ready to make a change and say out with the old and in with the new, but you're not sure how to do it and wondering where to start? You are are in the right place. These are my 10 steps to starting over from scratch. You can use these steps in your business. You can also use them in your life. A little bit vulnerable share for me. I have done this at least three times, but two times that I can think of off the top of my head. In January of 2017, I found myself in a very low place and I knew I needed to build myself back up, put myself out there, get out there, land some clients, and remember who I was so that I could really be fully fulfilled once again. I used a version of these steps um, to do just that. I took on a very small client at the beginning of that year in a junior community manager role which um, turned out to be a fabulous role because it brought me the income that I needed to be able to go to Europe for the summer and travel the world. It also led me um, to feeling some confidence again, which allowed me to bring in some new clients. By the end of that year, I had landed one of the biggest clients I had ever landed. My first official five figure per month contract and it went on to be one of my best years ever. Then again in January of 2020, my longtime partner here and life partner here at Social Media Pro, we separated. And once again, I found myself in a place where I was having to recreate myself from scratch. And while I didn't have a vision for what I wanted in my life, I knew the way I had been living was not going to work anymore. I pulled out all the tools from my tool belt, got myself back to the place I'm at now, which is healthy, happy, financially free, and able to teach and train and make these videos for you. Here from my lovely condo in Mexico, which again was not necessarily part of the plan, but came about while I was following my steps. Grab a pen and take some notes. Step one, get clear on exactly what it is that you want. Make it as vivid as possible. Write it out, pictures or vision board or mind movie. If you are trying to change yourself in your business, we'll put a link below this video to a client avatar worksheet that was made by our friends over at Digital Marketer that you can download and use to help change from the client you have now to creating a vision for the client that you want to work with. What industries are they in or what niche are they in? How much income do they earn? Investment in their marketing are they willing to do? What will your role in the company be? What will that look like? You may not know all of it, but here's what you want to do. Here's the trick to it. Even if you don't know exactly what you want, you want to focus on coming up and writing a vision for how it will feel. How will you feel when you wake up in the morning? Maybe what's your daily plan? I wake up, I'm happy and alive. I do my morning routine. I get some sunshine. I read a book. I do my miracle morning. Whatever it is that you want to do. I have my conference calls with my clients. I'm on Zoom with them. Maybe I go into an office. Whatever it is for you. And you want to make it as vivid as possible. So that's why either writing it out, maybe searching the internet and finding some pictures and making like a vision board for it. Or even um, using something that I use called Mind movies, which is where you can make yourself your own little video to watch with music and pictures that will really make you feel the experience of what it is that you want to experience. Step two, draw a line of demarcation with such amplitude of energy, like with real seriousness 
that you will never again go back to the past you or to that past situation, no matter what. This is content that I've learned um, over the years from the many, many, many personal development seminars I've been to and books um, that I have read. And that is that like Tony Robbins says, it takes 10, maybe it takes, it seems like it takes 10 years to change your life, but it doesn't. It changes in one decision. It changes in one moment. And that's the moment that you make that decision. Now that decision has to be made with such firmness and such intent that it literally separates you from the past. You feel so much emotion in that moment about your decision and that you are firm in it that you never go back to looking at the past ever again. It's like if you said to yourself, I'm sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. And you know what? It's okay if you get a little bit angry because the more passion you put into it and the more energy you feel and the more, you know, yes to this new way of living that you have, the more memorable it will be. See, the brain remembers emotional moments, okay? I bet for most of you, you know where you were on September 11th, 2001. But I bet you can't tell me where you were on August 11th, 2001. And that is because the day charged with so much emotion means you remember things better. You wanna recreate that feeling, that much emotion for yourself in making this decision such that you never forget it. That way next time you feel yourself slipping back into your old self, the memory of the emotion of nah, uh, uh, I'm never going there again. Step three, you must believe with your whole being that you are capable of achieving your goal, that you deserve to achieve your goal. This is a hard one for some people. You also need to feel gratitude for it having already happened in your life, even if it's not here yet. Are you capable of achieving your dream? You're probably a yes to that. Do you feel you deserve it? Not do I deserve it in a way like entitlement, like I deserve it. No, like I'm valuable. I deserve all that I want in life. I am worthy of receiving it. Not I'm entitled and someone should give it to me. I should have it without working for it. And then the gratitude piece. You have to think about it in terms of that possibility does exist in the realm of what's possible, in the world of all things are possible, it is possible that you achieve this goal. All the pieces exist and are around you. You just haven't figured out how to put them together yet. Go back to that vision board that you created in step one and remember what it will feel like when you're living your ideal day or you're working with your ideal client or you're living your ideal life. Then you can feel grateful in that moment that you get to feel that feeling and that you know without a shadow of a doubt because you are capable and because you are willing that this is coming to you. No questions asked. Now that we have kind of created a foundation for this new possibility or for this new idea or this new client, now we can start to create, right? Now we have time to do some work and do some more tactical things. And also, if you've never done steps one through three before, then this is the reason why you, when you've tried to change, it hasn't worked. Until you come up with a vision, until you draw the line of demarcation, and until you do the work to believe that you're capable and worthy and that it's coming without a shadow of a doubt, then anything you've created has been more of the same of what you already had. It maybe looked a little bit different, you know, it was a different client, but they paid the same. It's not until you start believing that you really deserve better clients and that you're capable of servicing better clients. Some of you come to me all the time and you think you need to keep learning, 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 learning more before a better client will hire you. It's really not about that. It is about being sure that you can communicate to them that whatever it is that they need you to do, that you're gonna do everything in your power to make that happen. And that you have the know-how to figure it out and you have resources available to figure it out. That's all that clients are looking for. So step four is now we need to train our minds and our bodies to stay in this state that we just created. We just made some decisions. We felt worthy. Now we need to practice staying here. So close your eyes. 
remind yourself what it would feel like to accomplish that goal. Or you can ask yourself the question, what would X do? If I was already that, what would I do next? What would be my next step? And I want you to memorize this feeling. Now, you can open your eyes if you want to, but what you wanna do is find anchors or triggers. Your vision board can be one of them. You can also find certain types of clothing that makes you feel a certain way. Maybe it's a place in your house. Maybe it's a song or music or other ritual that makes you feel like you're that person that you're trying to become. The name of the game here is to figure out how to stay in this state all day long. A lot of us have a morning routine where maybe we meditate and we practice our feelings um, and who we wanna be that day. But then the moment we come out of our meditation, you know, the phone rings, coffee pops beeping, um, we're late to a Zoom call, gotta get our kids to school, whatever it is, and we completely abandon the thoughts that we created while we were sitting down. Stay in this state all day long, not just in your 10 minute morning routine. Mm -hmm. These are all just hacks that I created for you. And I did this for myself. I moved to Mexico actually, because in Mexico, I could live near the beach. I could be out in the sunshine. I ate healthy. I could have easy access to healthy food. Um, I get lots of exercise because I walk everywhere. And I felt like I was always on vacation. The more you can feel it, the better you feel. All Bonus, you feel great all day long as well. So in an effort to teach yourself and retrain your mind, like we just did in step four, what are other ways or other structures that you can put in place to remind yourself? And you need to use something that is like a pattern interrupt app. So for me, I downloaded the I am app and I set it to go off every maybe, I think maybe in 15 minutes to start. And then I went 30 minutes and then I moved it to an hour. And now I, look at it whenever I look at it. What I, cause what I noticed was, is um, particularly in the beginning when I wasn't feeling the way I feel now, I would catch myself just having conversations with myself, being angry, um, being upset, feeling like a victim, you know, all of these things. And I just wanted that to stop, but I couldn't stop it unless I became aware of it. I almost really didn't even care about whatever affirmation it said. I cared about that it stopped me from continuously thinking in that loop and it reminded me to go that memorized feeling. Other things you can do is put reminders in your calendar. You can use the reminders app. You can put sticky notes all over your house and the places that you go. So when you look in the mirror, you have a sticky note. It reminds you to tell yourself that you're capable, you're deserving. Um, I use my desktop on my on my computer and also one of the most important places that you can put a reminder is the screensaver on your phone. I don't know how many times a day you look there, but it is some of the most important real estate that you see all day long. So I highly encourage you to put a reminder there. Step six, proximity is power. Look at the people around you in your life. Is it time to upgrade your group? Is it time to get an accountability partner or two or three? See, some people um, in your life get to stay, but they may need to stay at arm's distance. And these are the people who either don't believe in you, maybe criticize you. This could also be people that are just constantly complaining to you or they're negative. Maybe these are people that are just not going where you're going, AKA, it really sucks to say, but they're not of a wealthy or abundant or positive mindset. It's really easy to get sucked down into what's going on with other people. It's even hard for me to share because some people in my life got moved to arm's distance. Some of them might even be watching this video as I shared it because I was trying to move forward and I needed to silence any negative noise in my life. I was having a hard enough time silencing the own negativity between my own ears. And I didn't need to hear or absorb anybody else's. So if anybody wasn't like actively every day working on growing themselves, I kind of stopped responding to text messages. 
And what I did do was I joined a couple of groups. I tightened up my inner circle. I made sure to schedule calls with my friends that were positive influences in my life to make sure that I kept in touch with them and that we had a, we have time to connect. Some people I connect with weekly, some every two weeks some once a month. Sometimes the reminder comes up for our call and we're both busy, but we at least have a time to touch base and say hello, so we stay in touch. Proximity is power also applies to what you consume. So it also applies to the things that you're reading and the things that you're listening to. So this is why you see people switch to audiobooks, podcasts, switch off the media, Turn off your social media feeds, except for business use, of course. Make sure that you're reading and listening to positive, inspirational, uplifting media. Back to that idea that you don't have a plan yet. Tony Robbins says, if you don't know what to do in life, start with your physical health. Even now, I'm trying to go to the next level. I had a falling out with a client a couple of months ago and it left me sort of trying to figure things out really again in a new way. Main thing that I did because I didn't really know what else to do at the time was to put myself into my physical health. This could be supplements, this could be exercise, this could be diet, hydration, anything but optimizing and changing your physical body will change your mindset and that will change your life. We have that video on bleed theory, right? So when you start something and you start working on yourself in any area, it will bleed over into all the areas. Step eight, another thing you've heard me talking a lot about recently is integrity. One of the ways to help move yourself forward in life is to create an integrity file of everything in your life that's kind of undone, all the loose ends, and get to work on cleaning them up. It might be unpaid bills, it might be that your car's out of inspection, you know, that key that you need to get um, duplicated that it's been sitting near the door for a year, uh, a conversation with someone that you've needed to have for a while, you know, where you needed to share some stuff with them, or, Interestingly enough, one of my students this week, earlier in the week shared with me, one of the challenges she was having was with her daughter. And when we showed up to our second call after I gave her this 10 step process and I asked her if she had a conversation with her daughter, she said she did, but most of the issues she was able to resolve on her own. In that line of demarcation and when you're starting to create, all of a sudden things that you thought were a big deal are just not a big deal anymore. There may still be a few things that you need to address though. And if so, you need to have those conversations. You need to move that gunk and that garbage that's in the way. These are the things that when you're thinking about them, they're stressful. They take up mental space. So if you just make a list and figure out how you're gonna get them done, start getting them done, you're already starting to make progress. Is it hiring a maid because you're have too much time working, you know, you want to spend more time working and less time cleaning your house or a personal assistant to run errands for you and to help you do your list. It's a great re time to hire a personal assistant right after you've made a really big to-do list of things to do. Make your integrity file and figure out a way to get going on getting it done. Bonus points if you complete it. Now at this point, you should ha have some ideas to create your plan and uh, that you want to create to accomplish that goal and I want you to work backwards. You already created your vision in step one, and so now um, start there and work backwards. I use a system called EOS from the book Traction by Gina Wickman to map out my goals both in my business and in my personal life. I love the one-year vision, maybe even a three-year vision, and there's even more five-year vision, but I have a three-year vision for the business, and then we have a one year vision of where we wanna be. And then we chunked it down each quarter, what we would have to do to get there. And then we continuously review and revise each quarter. What did we get done? What did we not get done? What's that one year vision? And are we on track to complete it? That's step nine. And finally, step 10, get started and take action. For most of us, again, I've been talking about how social media managers don't market themselves. They don't take their own business seriously and they don't treat themselves as a client. So as particularly if you're using these steps because you're just tired of how your business has been going and you want to change it, then you need to start marketing yourself. So take that action and start doing your own content marketing. 
watch my last video, be your own best client. To recap, there were a lot of steps in here and some of them were mindset and vision focused and some were tactical action oriented. I can tell you for sure that when you have a vision for the future, it's not just about visualizing it and thinking about it and praying for it and being grateful for it. You also have to meet that energy with taking action to physically move yourself in that direction. Show up for yourself and work towards that vision and hold that vision, that goal in your mind and feel it and know that it's you're taking those steps to get there and it is going to arrive if you just, you know, hold on for one more day, as they say. I wanna give you two little tips. So to recap, you guys, I have two things um, that I wanna mention. The first is you wanna know how to measure this process. How do you know if you're making progress? Well, you can't manage what you don't measure. And so what is the measure for this process? It actually is your current reality. If you look around and you look at your life, you are literally living the life that you think you deserve. When you're ready to elevate, you'll know that you're, you're gonna do all of these steps and you'll know that you've succeeded when you look around and realize that you are now living in a new reality. What will start to happen? Different clients will start coming to you. The first one, you'll say it's an anomaly. The second one, you'll still discount. By the third time, you'll go, holy moly, I'm getting the new clients. That's the time to again have gratitude that the process is working. Even if you don't land those clients, it doesn't matter. They're showing up. You're starting to make progress. Give yourself the congratulations for the little wins along the way. Open your awareness and start looking for, have I leveled up? Am I seeing the changes? that I'm asking for. And that's step two or the last or the second thing that I wanna leave you with, which is oftentimes when we level up, something happens and you'll wanna write an, a text to a friend of yours and say, you're never gonna believe this, guess what happened? Because oftentimes, even when we have a vision and a plan, things come to us in a way that we least expect it. So keep your eyes open for those serendipities. The last thing uh, is that when those serendipities show up, you just know. You know it was what was meant for you. You know it's what you were working towards. And again, it's another way to measure the outcomes that you're trying to produce here. And just, I can't say it enough, congratulate yourself every single time you have one. All right, you guys, this was a long video, but a super important one. I hope you got a lot out of this video. I really got a lot out of it nailing down the process when I was sharing it with my students. And even as I share it with you, I feel a sense of confirmation. These are the steps that I took to literally bring myself back from nothing, from no income, from no clients, from living at home with my family because I had separated again from my life and business partner and I had to figure everything out and it didn't come immediately. There was also a pandemic, but um, it didn't come immediately. It's something I had to work for and stick with over time. I had to congratulate myself for the small victories, the small steps along the way, and I'm still not even done yet. I'm still applying this process every time you bust into and you realize you're in a new realm or a new level. So memorize these steps, use these tools, and I look forward to seeing you jump to the next level. If you liked this video and you wanna see more from me and more from us here at Social Media Pro, smash that subscribe button and head on over and check out our seven ways uh, to get clients fast ebook. There'll be a link down in the comments. If you're ready to take action, and you know you want new clients, then these are seven ways that you can take action right now to start move yourself towards newer and better clients. That's all for today. I'll see you on the next video.